BTC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 1, Part 4. The next, <clears throat> the next aspect of this lesson is to show a simple assembly drawing. So we've created some parts. We created an assembly using the parts. And now we're going to have a drawing. So the center of everything in Creo is the actual part. No part, no drawing, no part, no assembly. No part, no assembly, no assembly, no assembly drawing. So you have to have parts, obviously. So we're going to make a couple of simple drawings. We're going to start off with just the assembly. And again, let's be a little careful this time. And it's going to be a drawing. So I must select the new drawing choice. And it's the connector. And I'm going to connector 1 because mine has a connector already. Click OK. And we're going to select or keep the default. And this is very important. See what the default model is. I had the assembly up last. That's why it's here. In many cases, you're going to have to browse to find what you want and then have that be the default model. We'll use the template, C size, click OK. And because we use the template, it'll give us the top, front, and right view. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to shut off all of the axes, point, coordinate system, and datum planes because they have nothing to do with the drawing. Now, nothing went away. If I roll my mouse just a little bit, it'll repaint. I could have also gone up here and resized or repainted from the menu, the quick menu here, the graphics window menu. So if you put your cursor over the top of them, you'll see that they highlight the view. So for instance, let's say I click on the top view here and right mouse button. These are the choices. I could delete the top view if I wanted. So I'm going to do that. Don't really want a top view, let's say. If I want to move the view around, I've got to unlock that. So if I unlock it, if it's locked here, or up in the, the ribbon, unlock it. And now I can move it around. And this is the first view. This is the parent view. So over here, I can move this view, but only in regards to the parent view here. So I'm going to move this one over a little bit. Maybe move this over a little bit. And click anywhere in the non-graphic area right mouse button and I'm going to select sheet setup and click inside where it says format PTC products have this hidden agenda for some reason and the little drop down doesn't show unless you click in the field itself browse and we're going to click on the C size ASME standard format and click OK some of you will say no it's called ANSI ANSI uh, hasn't existed for these standards since 1994. So it's an ASME standard we're using. Now it gives us our title block and border. You can zoom up and you can see. It gives us the zones, letters, and numbers. And if I want to center it again, I come up here and refit. It's got two of my views for the assembly. Now I'm going to have we right click, not here, but here and a general view, click OK, and select up in the corner somewhere. So I'll move this dialog. You'll see it put in a general view, which is the priometric view. I could change that to isometric if I wanted to. And apply. Cancel that dialog. And if I wanted to move things around, adjust things, I can. I can change the sizes of them, too. But in general, we're going to leave it pretty much like it is. Uh, if we double click on a view, it'll come up with the properties again. If we go over and click on annotate and double click on a view, see what happens. Same thing. So we're going to. We could, turn, we could actually change these all into shaded view if we wanted to. This one came up as a shaded view. And if you double click on it and you go into view display, you'll see it's following the environment. And the environment was set as shading with edges. You can change it to anything you want. How about no hidden? And then cancel. So, <clears throat> 
excuse me, on here and see what else we had in this particular section. And that was it. So I think what we're going to do is we'll combine the drawings so it's not such a short lecture. This is our assembly drawing. So we want to save that one and then close it. Now let's do new again. And this one is another drawing. And this one will be of the plate. And I'm going to select plate one as my name. Type it in. OK. And I've got to be very careful here because I can't click OK. It still has a default model of the connector. And I want the default model to be my plate. So here's my plate. Click OK. If you make a mistake with that, just close it and do it again. Just close the window. So here again, right mouse button anywhere on the screen. Go in and select Browse. And we'll go again to the C size. Click on OK. And we have three views. Now let's click on the right view and delete it. It's not necessary. And let's click on the both views. So if you hold down your control key, select both views, or window it in and select both views, you'll see the model in the drawing tree over here shows that they're selected. Right model, right mouse button, and then show model or annotations. So these are all the dimensions that were used to create the part. So we're going to click on select all here. And go over where it has the datum tab and select all. There's no notes, so that's not going to come up. Apply. And then close by canceling the dialog. So you've got your dimensions here. And if you click on a dimension, you can move it to a better position. And it might move a little funny because we still have our, let me go back over to our options here. We still have a grid snap on. So let's turn that off. Normally, I never have the grid and never have the grid snap on. So now the only thing I can say here is we have an odd situation where we have a dimension along one of the flats here or edges rather than flat to flat. So this dimension is really quite useless in manufacturing. So I'm going to go over and click on part, and I'm going to open up the part. And I'm going to go to the extrude feature, right mouse button, and edit the definition of it. I'm now going to go over, and I'm going to go to my, let's do right mouse button. I can go to the placement tab. It's the same thing edit and I want to go into a two view 2d view and this dimension here is given to us because the system said you can't have this section without a dimension it shows this one and you'll see all these constraints are equal so right mouse button dimension all these are from the you can get from up here on top too and I'm going to select two flats and a middle mouse button to place my dimension. And I'm going to delete that two inch dimension. And as far as this size goes, let's go and select five, hit five and enter. And it changes the size. Check. I can rotate it around with my middle mouse button. Or I can change its orientation with the command. I'm going to keep the depth the same, middle mouse button. I could save it here, close the window, and go back over here. And you'll see that the dimension is gone for two inches. So if I click on my annotate tab and I say show model dimensions, click on dimension here and click on the front view, you'll see that the five pops up. Apply close. Now, what if this doesn't 
really coincide with my design idea. I don't want five inches. Maybe I want something else. So I'll double click on it and let's make it four. And hit enter. And it turns red because it hasn't been regenerated. So I'm going to just pop back over to the part by opening it. Right mouse button, open, and regenerate. You saw it got bigger. I'm sorry, it got smaller, it got thicker, but it got smaller across. Could save it here too. Close my window. And now you can see it updated on the sheet. So it updates on the part and on the sheet. And if we close this and we open up our assembly that we already did, the assembly drawing, you'll see that it's changed in size also. Across. This concludes lesson one.